everybody. So in high school, you might remember that history and biology were separated into two distinct classes. But our next guest studied them together and has uncovered some fascinating knowledge. On her cross-Canada tour from cell to civilization and odyssey of humankind, Professor Alice Roberts teaches audiences that the evolution of humanity is much more complex than we ever realized. Welcome, Professor Roberts. Thank Welcome. you very much. Thank we are you, very excited you. to have you here. Um, so this is very interesting because you started your career in medicine as yeah. a surgeon, and then you made the switch to academia to teach clinical anatomy and research the origins of humankind and ancient diseases. Yeah. So why, why, yeah. why that switch? What happened there? I'd always... I'd always been interested in human origins. I'd always found it utterly fascinating. I, I'd always been interested in, in biology and evolution at mm. school. Um, but, you know, I, I studied to be a doctor. I became a young surgeon. Then I did a six-month job teaching anatomy to medical students. And I also actually fell in love with teaching. So I absolutely love teaching. And I think a lot of that kind of comes out in, in what I do on television, but also in my stage shows as well. Uh, but yeah, so I, I, I love bringing together these subjects, as you said, that are, are often th are thought of as being quite separate, history and biology. So in my show, what I do is I go right from the origins of life on Earth four billion years ago, and do all that biological evolution, but then get into human history and wow. culture and the origin of our civilizations. So it's a it's a big story. It's like four billion years in two hours. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. easy. Yeah. Well, I had a taste of, of of what you're speaking about in in biology 101, actually, because there was a whole section on comparative anatomy, which yeah. is history and clearly biology, and it blew my mind and your research has found animals that we as vertebrates are very connected to. Can yeah. you share some of this? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, you know, we're connected to everything. I mean, that's the, that's the big story here is that actually what we're doing is we're mapping our own family trees, but in a really big way. And, mm -hmm. and the root of the tree goes back to the, you know, first cells on Earth four billion years ago. But it means that we're it means we are related to everything. And we know that we're related to apes and apes have got quite similar bodies to us. Mm -hmm. We look at them, we've got similar hands and even similar faces a bit. And then you look at something like a fish and you go, hang on, how am I, mm -hmm. how can I be related to that? But it's got eyes, it's got a brain, it's got mm. a spine, so it's a vertebrate like us. It doesn't have arms and legs, obviously has fins instead. Breathes water instead of air. Mm -hmm. And so you go, actually, there's quite a lot of differences here, but if we look at our adult bodies, they're very different. If we, you know, if we look at a, if we look at a ray or a shark, um, it's, it doesn't look anything like no. us at all. Not and it's got all. these, it's got these gills, you know, we don't have those. But, 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 if we look at our embryos, so if we look at uh, a five week old human embryo, that's what you look like five weeks after conception, yep. not a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. um, it's very weird, we've got a tail which later disappears. You've got the beginnings of arms and legs just here. And then you've also got something weird up in the neck just there. Can you see that? Little gills. Ridges. It basically gills. Huh. Yeah. So the embry a human embryo has what look like gills. That is mind-blowing. This is incredible. <laughs> okay, can I ask just a really quick little follow-up? So you talked about like tracing it back essentially to those single-celled organisms. Yeah. Is it safe to assume that as you go upwards, like we'd be closer to the apes up here and then the, the last common ancestor or uh, yeah. the humans would be the fish closer to that single-celled uh, organism? Yeah, so the, so the ancestor, the, clo the, the last common ancestor with chimpanzees and gorillas goes back about five to seven million years ago. The last common ancestor with fish, we have to go back to about 300 million years gotcha. ago. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, that's yeah. very interesting. Wow. Okay, yeah. No, I wanted to actually ask you, let's go back uh, three and a half million years ago. <laughs> um, I want to talk to you about a, a fossil named Lucy, right? And this is, uh, Lucy is the first documented ancestor to evidently have walked on two feet. So I could imagine how shocking this was uh, for the research world. How do we know that Lucy walked and what other similarities do we have to her? I mean, it, that looks like a human skeleton to mm -hmm. me. It does, yeah. she's absolutely tiny though. She's only about that tall. Oh. So she's a really tiny little person. It's a wonderful skeleton. The brown bits there are the bits that we've actually got and the white bits of the reconstruction. Luckily, we've got bits from kind of, you know, we've got the femur, the thigh bone on the left, and then we've got bits of the tibia, the shin bone on the right. So it's oh. a pretty complete skeleton actually, as fossil skeletons go. And we're basically looking at things like the angle at the knee joint, the shape of the pelvis, uh, and using clues from modern anatomy, so knowing modern anatomy, knowing how bones and muscles and tendons and ligaments go together, we can work out that she actually would have walked on two legs. But even if you doubt the bones, mm -hmm. we've actually got something else 
from the same time. So Lucy's uh, fossil skeleton comes from Ethiopia. Over in Tanzania, we've got these incredible fossilized footprints <gasps> from the same time. Right. Wow. So we can see, so there was, a, there was a volcano, there was ash coming down. It must have rained and made the ash sticky. And then some of these people, these Australopithecines, we call them, must have walked across it because we can see these people walked on two, two legs and we've got those fossilized footprints wow. from around the same time. It's just amazing. Very, very so cool. from three and a half million years ago, we've been walking like this on two legs. Yeah, she walks a little bit differently from us, but she is, she's very comfortable walking upright on two legs, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Lucy, very cool. Okay, <laughs> I want to ask you about um, when you were filming in Australia, uh, you walked through a couple of uh, rock shelter sites, I've, I understand, that you said have been used by people nearly 65,000 years ago. Uh, yeah. And the sites, they, they, they stretched and they helped support the theory that our African ancestors they actually populated Australia before Africa. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is great. This is, this is now kind of getting to the point where we're looking at our own species. So our own species evolves in Africa about 300,000 years mm -hmm. ago. So we we've come a long way since Lucy. We've now got modern humans in Africa 300,000 years ago. And our species is African and just in Africa for another couple of hundred thousand years. And then after 100,000 years ago, we see evidence of people, modern humans, starting to spill out of Africa and they spill out all around the coast of the Indian Ocean and they get as far as Australia. That's astonishing because they must have had some kind of boat. I was just going to say, they're how would they not swimming? Yeah. And this, yeah. is, this is not the time when the like Pangea time. No, no, so no. There was, was always, there was always a deep sea channel between the last island in Indonesia and Australia. But do so we know they, how far that would have been? It's it's a it's a long way, so it's you can you wouldn't be able to have seen Australia in the distance, right? Um, Not as big as it is now, but so it's it yeah, was, it it's, been it's just incredible. And uh, so we've got evidence of modern humans in Australia from these rock shelters with stone tools with with ochre, so they're we presume they're painting. It's pigment uh, from sixty five thousand years ago, and that's before modern humans get to Europe. So it oh takes another gosh. kind of twenty thousand years for modern humans to get up through what's now the Middle East and into Europe. That's wild. It is mad. And the boat uh, part is wild, it's, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. can't be like easy water to get through, right? So no, not at all. And I think, I mean, you know, some people have said, oh, it's a pregnant woman on a log. And I'm like, no, I think no, it's no, a bit no. more than that. Exactly. Yeah. I think there's a whole population, you know, <laughs> seeding themselves in Australia. Right, right, I'm right. going to ask you a wacky question, because when you think about our genus Homo, uh, we had like the Homo erectus, we had Homo yeah. habilis, and then we have Homo sapiens. That's yeah, yeah, us. yeah. The other ones aren't with us any longer. No. So presumably Homo sapiens, like we're not gonna last forever. No, we do, do you foresee us particularly like evolving into a new species? Yeah, we will. Of course you will. This what is do you think it'll look like? This is the fate of every what, species what on the planet. Um, do you know, I think for a long time we're gonna look very similar because we've we've taken away a lot of the effects of natural selection. Because natural selection is the Grim Reaper. Let, you know, don't beat around the bush. Natural selection is a grim reaper. Um, with modern medicine um, and with saving our children from infant mortality, we have blunted the scythe of the grim reaper. Huh. So we haven't got as much selective pressure on us now because we're able to use all those technologies to, to buffer ourselves. I mean, we've always used, as soon as you build yourself a house, you're buffering yourself from the, the yeah. temperature outside. Right. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, so medicine is just another technology that allows us to do that. So I think our, our genetics will probably change quite a bit, but we might stay looking quite similar on the outside. So that's interesting, because I think we could change quite a bit genetically and our immune systems will change because we're still under selection from all sorts of diseases. Oh my God. I want to talk to you quickly about your tour. We only have like 20 seconds mm -hmm. left, but just tell me what we can expect. Is it yeah. going to be a lecture? What's it going to be like? It's, uh, it, it's not really a lecture. It's a show. I would say it's a show. It's, it's really dramatic. Um, the lighting's dramatic. We've got fantastic visuals, uh, music, um, and it is about bringing this story alive. It's such an incredible story, and I wanted to do it in a really, really dramatic way. You oh. are so <laughs> fascinating, Alice. This is so great. Yes. Tour from South to Civilization hits Canada in May, and you can find tickets on her website. Hey, you, come a bit closer. We've got so many more must see interviews, spicy debates, lifestyle tips, and pop culture moments. So, subscribe to our channel by tapping the logo below and don't miss out.